prayer and pledge the flag. Father, we want to thank you for allowing us together today. And we want to keep in our prayers the devastation in Tennessee and North Carolina. Help those people and, and help other people to be willing to help them also. We pray that you guide the decisions that are made here today in the best interest of our community. In your name we pray. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Jason, would you like to go ahead on the, uh, present the golf cart uh, of the host? I don't have it with me, but I would like to, there's two parts of it. First of all, I'd like to make a motion to, what was the name of the company? Was it Cunningham? Cunningham. Uh, Okay, I would like to make a motion that we accept Cunningham's bid uh, purchase for, was it 18? Yeah. Eight, I'm sorry, I didn't bring that. 18 golf carts? Okay, it's $42,000. Except this is accept Cunningham's bid to purchase the old golf carts. From, $42,600. Okay, $42,600. Sorry. Go ahead. Didn't you want to put something else in the motion? When we sell. I mean, we purchased. This is just a sale. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, same. Any further discussion? There are none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign? No. <coughs> Three to one to pass. Four to one. Four to one. Four to one to pass. Uh, okay, then the next so, one. And, and the next one is we advertise for uh, bids to lease uh, for a five-year period of 18 new golf carts. Uh, I want to accept their Cunningham's bid, our lease of purchase for five, five years. Only amendment I want to make to it is if the treasurer and Melton comes up with any additional money to make uh, some payments on it at one time, allow her to do that so we not to pay interest over the five-year period. So any big payments we can make to offset the cost of the interest, allow Ms. Uh, the treasurer, Ms. Melton, to do that. Do you have a second? Sorry. Second. Will those payments be made from revenue from the golf course? Uh, some of it would be revenue, maybe LG, LG, is it LGA money you said maybe? LGA is going to pay it off. All right. But if we make the payment to the company. That would just save us that we can, not that we can, but it might save us $18,000 in interest over the period of the, the, the lease. The, the regular ones will be from the golf course budget. <coughs> golf course budget. Uh, you know, if, uh, all, all in favor of that, we'll say aye. Aye. Both like sign? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, next, we have to consider the ordinance 2024 day 7, second reading. We've already read the first reading on the ordinance. I'll make the motion. Motion by Jason. I will say that there was an additional amendment consistent with y'all's discussion. I actually need a second. Oh, yeah, for, for, for discussion. I'll make the, the, the first thing somebody wants to make one for discussion. Who's the most second for discussion? Second for discussion. Second. Okay. I'm sorry, Justin. That's okay. Uh, but the approval, uh, I mean, this uh, ordinance, we have certain language in it. Uh, the only thing that, that was added. Uh, I can just read this for you guys if you want. The approval of a variance in any individual case shall not be construed as a precedent for approval of similar variances in the future. Um, uh, meaning that if someone files something just because we approved it in one action does not mean we have to approve it in another. Each will be considered on a case by case. And we say that in the next sentence. We say each variance request will be considered independently based upon specific facts and circumstances presented. The fiscal court may review each request on a case-to-case -case basis as to each variance within the application. And prior approvals will not obligate the fiscal court to approve similar requests in the future. Future. Uh, the fiscal court may at its discretion can consider each variance within an application separately rather as a single unified variance. Okay, so it's allowing you some um, discretion with respect to 
on a case by case basis on what you This would probably accept it this way, one would that's necessarily have to accept that. that was, and it sounded like some of the concern in, in, yeah. in the prior uh, first reading. And I do add one other thing, which was in the, uh, the misdemeanor section, we added uh, uh, $100 to $500 per violation per day. And so it, we added the words per day there. Is that in our the ordinance? Uh, it will be. Our it, MOU. It, uh, well, the OMU includes uh, similar language, but right now we're just we're considering the words. Yeah. Residences, 
Um, it would, um, uh, and I want you to check the maps when they get here to make sure whatever protection you want that are in there. I have not seen the maps, so I don't know how much of the protection that the residences have. That well, we just had a red line. There really wasn't. This, well, there's supposed to be a bigger map, I think. So how far each one was. Yes. Correct. So um, the maps are currently in route from Owensboro. So uh, <laughs> they'll, they should be here within five to ten minutes. And we have to send them to the big printer there. I know uh, Justin just stepped out to actually print off okay. the, sounds like they're okay. back, the memorandum of understanding. So we can pass that up and go through it. So The one that you've got correct, you're correct. Yeah, today. the one that, so I've, I've been in negotiation with this with the attorney for, for scout as far as what you guys have indicated to me that you would, would want. And, and by example, like the farmland, right? We, we are aware that some within this solar project may have, uh, may have been farmland, right? Uh, you're agreeing to this memorandum of understanding should you choose to do that, would say you're okay with this farmland, but in a sense with regard to, you know, Various factors that are that are uh, within 278, KRS 278. The uh, the modification and variances with the with regard to their application in this one does not mean that you would allow uh, expansion or new projects or, or amendments without again considering this ordinance. Okay. Uh, also. We wanted to make sure that there was no eminent domain, that, that, that uh, companies could not try to take anybody's farmland that, that did not want to. We wanted to make sure that that was for sure in there and that's supposed to be in there. Again, this is simply up to the court's discretion on whether you wish to allow these variances or not, but I would tell you to make sure that you look at the maps, make sure you're comfortable with anything, um, um, to see if it's what the, what the court wants to do. So anytime new park, anytime they want to that expand with new farmland, they have to come to us. So well, it doesn't necessarily be farmland. I mean, be maybe a couple any, more. Any, any, like if it's going to go around a residence and they wanted a variance with respect to the setbacks, that's something the court could consider. Um, okay, so like on the third page on this one, that's the uh, exhibit C. Should, should show some of your based on the the, 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 the MOU. Exhibit C should show a lot of your setbacks in more detail. This is 170 feet. Is that from the house or is that from the, there's a yellow duck, the pin? Yeah, so, so that would be from the nearest wall of the house to the okay. nearest edge of the solar panel. That is, the, what, that is the closest residence we have um, near, near solar panel. So I also want to point out, you see this big dark green line here. That is the vegetative screening that we're proposing to do. So, granted, we will be 170 feet. They're across the road from us. We will plant the vegetative screening in order to block their view. What I also want to show on this residence, there are already natural trees south of the vegetative screening. Yeah. So it's you already kind of like got a hill kind of going up right there. Right? Exactly. So you already got some, you know, you got a good visual break there. But we also want to point out where we're, we're committed to keeping that screening so the panels are out of sight, out of mind. So the vegetative screening is just off the state easement. Correct. Well, we, we cannot place it within the state right. or the county's easement. So it will be on our lease property on the ground that we have under solar lease. Yeah. Uh, and it will be installed there to, to protect those non-participating residents. Yeah. I was just making sure everybody knew it wouldn't be right up next to the fence. It will be right off the That's correct. Yes. <coughs> So I'm looking at uh, the next page to see. There's 370 after that one. Where is this part at? Anyway, the house, they get the house uh, participating landowner. It's just 200 feet on the other side of 85. Because the only thing on the other side of 85 that I see by a house is uh, right there by the Coleman's. Yeah. Who is that? Who is this? That's the garden. So that that's still the same piece. Yeah. So that you're, you're absolutely right. That participating landowner, that's gardeners. That that's who you're looking at. So. Yeah. Okay. Are they aware of, of these setbacks? I'm assuming. Oh yes, sir. We visited with them last week. We met with all of our participating landowners, so that they are aware of what we're proposing.
notice on a few of these pictures it doesn't have green, like on page four? Is, are, they, are the landowners still getting vegetation there, or is that, that what that black line is? I'm assuming it's going to as well, where the homeowner is in the front back. Yeah, so here, that's a participating landowner, so that's someone we've under lease, so we, we aren't required to do vegetative screening on our participating landowners. So we're agreeing to do it for folks that, for one reason or another, have elected not, not to participate in the project. <coughs> so now, that's not to say should they request it. Correct. I mean, we, we want to be good neighbors, uh, not only with our landowners that put ink to paper, but with folks that haven't. Right. So for our landowners, if, if they want to request it, I'd ask it's something, something we, we do for them. This right here looks like that channel is a little bit of a very, very good really doesn't think it's going to be. This is all inclusive. This is actually to the main. So this would be, this would be C, how this would be. But as this is a, this would be a, because this would be the kind of thing I have to have the lead off of Consider that the, when they indicated that variance on there, that that's their variance application token was good, which is this MOA, MOE. Do you have any other land in the future you're thinking about, or is this? I'll be honest with you, the part there on what Harmon Berry's Loop or whatever, where it's right there, and that's that's where. I mean. That's where you're going to get most of your residents. And it, the way it dips down in there, you know, they're setting up high. They're looking right on. So even if you put the, even if you put the trees there, they're going to, they're going to see part of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so you know, when, when you look at the land that we've under control, you know, we're always trying to optimize. We look at the panels. They're getting bigger. They're getting more efficient. So that means you need less ground. So even when you look at the map, like Eric has in front of him, if you want to show that one, right, the, the blue there, that's that's everything that we have on release. So we look at optimizing the projects. We could end up using, you know, less acreage. Uh, we'll be covered in modules as those panels get bigger, as they get more efficient. Um, when it comes to picking up additional acreage, I mean, we could. We'd have to come back to you all the way that this agreement is structured mm -hmm. and, and get your approval. You know, we're always looking at, you know, optimizing. You know, folks change their mind, ground gets bought and sold, someone decides that they want to jump in and participate in the project down the road. It could be some good flat farm ground that is outside out of mind. We'd have to come back to you all to get your approval if we want to include that new acres. But um, we're, we're always looking at ways to optimize. So, Like I said, that's really the only section that I see that really throws, uh, you know, the Coleman's is kind of, it is up on a hill, and there is some... There's four or five houses that look right, right down into that valley. Yeah, and the, and the one, if you look on the very last page, that's the one we had talked about, and it's 340 foot. Now, who, let's see, what is that one? That is that? That's Matt Allen. Okay. Arthur side, Jones's. Which so, is this true? And this Jones is Oak Yeah. yeah. Violet. So you're already 340 at an angle. Yeah. So it's not in a direct line of sight. You're probably what 550, 600 uh, with a vegetative screen on that that specific one. And so what what you're looking at now, when Jason and I are discussing. The list of property owners that would be considered your exhibit B if you're reading the, uh, the MOU. This would be considered your C, exhibit C. Uh, the A is the larger map that has uh, a lot of green in the CND, yes. CND screening as well. The G 
you explain? I'm sorry when I was out. But that this MOU is basically uh, a written version of what was agreed to the last meeting. Um, as requested basically by the court that you know we want to see what you want to do. Uh, so visually the map show you where the setbacks are. So this, this just puts it in writing. You know, it could be called a, a variance, it could be called an agreement, it, you know, you can call it whatever you want. It's just called a memorandum of understanding that just shows that the court is understanding of what their application is going to represent. But when we sign it, we're tied to it. Well, your their application will have it's over that they're they're tied to the same same guidelines. So once they submit their application, then it goes to the state, then it's open for public review and you know hearing and go through all the steps of that. This is just agreeing to you know the concerns addressed at the last meeting. But what I'm saying, well, once we, we sign this MOU, we're done. Well, I think I think their intention is is from I think from my understanding, they're requesting approval of the MOU, which is based on their application, which is pretty much these, which is their their these exhibits. Yeah, uh, they I would imagine they're going to take that uh, agreement to the state and, and indicate to the state that they've been able to reach an agreement with the local. Uh, a fiscal court in determining how these how these boundaries are going to be set up, what the setbacks are, uh, because the state is probably not going to approve something if if if, they, if the local participation is not is not one. Uh, you know, Christian County uh, decided to make theirs more restrictive. There's other counties that have, that are less restrictive. Uh, certainly, our ordinance, if you if you don't consider the variances, is pretty restrictive. Uh, but we've considered all matters when making that. Course of action. Uh, uh, and I'm okay with most areas, all areas except that one, because how did that? How do they feel about it? Have you talked to all the ones on? Was oh, it Harmon's Ferry Loop? Uh, it's Ferry Loop of yeah. some kind. Of but I mean, if it's if it's a, if the court is asking whether a vote tonight uh, accepting the MOU and uh, their application, like we don't have. We, because of how new the ordinance is, we don't have a written application for them to fill out. It's it's through exhibits of the MOU. It would be uh, binding in nature and all like it would. So uh, completely up to you if you wish to vote or not. Um, I do uh, scout the uh, energy would probably tell you that there is certainly some urgency. You heard that in the last meeting, but it is up to it's up to the court as, as you see it. And I might turn it over to you know Greg Dutton is here from Frost Brown Todd. Maybe talk a little bit about the state process and soliciting folks just like you're concerned about input on the plant and how it's going to be constructed and handled. So Greg you might talk through how, how that input's handled and, and how the hearing process works and, and how those folks have the opportunity to voice concerns, even if we do agree to this tonight and, and, and we and we sign. So yeah, so even if this is agreed to tonight, then what would happen is we would put together an application. Before we even file the application, there has to be notice countywide. So not just to you all, but to every resident in the county. There's individual notice to those in, those folks that live around the projects that call them adjoining landowners. So anybody that encircles the project would get an individual notice. Um, there is actually a, a copy of the application that we're going to file that must be provided to this court. Um, before we can even file our application with the state. So you'll see it before the state even sees it. Uh, we file the application, and then there is basically anybody who wants to intervene can intervene in that process. Anybody that wants to write a letter or submit a comment can do that. And if anybody wants to request a local public hearing, they can do that. So there are multiple layers of public involvement that are... And I understand that, but is okay. any of those ever stopped it? Uh, there has been one project that was denied, and there have been multiple projects that have been altered through the process, um, going through the signing board process. Yeah, because we have to have hearings, and, you know, public hearings. The yeah, and, um, and you'll be as part of the, the, the board that decides. So it'll be uh, the, the county judge executive and then a local member from the community are both appointed. So they are full members of the board that ultimately decides at the state level. <coughs> You know, with the changes, I'm, I'm, I'm for you guys. I want you. I just don't like that one area. I wish that there was any way. I don't know that that area could be moved out. 
because hey, that's where all, most all the residential are. It looks to me like 340 is the closest. That's, you know, yeah. Back in that area you're talking about. And it, with, resident, with the screening, you know, there's already a natural break and then you've got the screening in addition. Well, I have a question about the screening on the last page there. Um, so the, the heavy green line is indicating the screen area and then the black line is indicating the fence. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm not trying to pick this apart, but with it, I mean, it would be more trees, I understand, but why, why would you not along that roadway, or is that just something that you all were, were not feeling like, unless it was non-participating? Because I was, I was thinking that we would still want to keep uh, a buffer along roadway, especially along a state highway. So not the case. Or? I mean, so so usually what we see on other projects and in, in other states and other places, the requirement is usually between residences and the array. So it's rare you could have a project that could run a couple miles adjacent to a state highway, a county road. It's really rare to see <coughs> decision makers and boards say you got to plant vegetative screening along the entire plant. It's usually just between those residences and the array. So we, we followed that you know methodology here on the project. So, so the only thing that catches me off guard is that uh, from our meeting last, uh, y'all acted like we would have ample time to consider um, these things, the application that will be sent in, and from what I can gather, we got it after the meeting started, uh, and I don't see that to be ample time to make a decision on anything, uh, personally. Uh, do y'all well, see that to be the we, same we, way? We really just received the MOU day two days ago, the MOU. And then we received this today. Yeah. I, I was kind of anticipating from y'all's language at the meeting last time that we would receive this, you know, you would think maybe yesterday. Please. Well, I mean, we, we've had council working with one yeah, another. Yeah, and um, I've, I've heard that part, but, you know, we didn't get anything in writing uh, for ample time to review until today. Well, I mean, we, on the screen, I mean, we went through these residences, and, I mean, we walked the court and the members through the project last week. And, you know, what initially was brought up, for us to submit an application, we ultimately need to know what we're engineering to. We need to know that we have consensus. We have the course approval on, you know, 100 feet from county roads, 200 feet from State Highway 85. We can't move forward on submitting an application if we don't have consensus on what the setbacks need to be and how we need to engineer and design the plan. That's why we're here today is to try to reach that agreement so we can take that next step forward in the process. Well, now, I, I would disagree probably with that point. Because, I mean, within our ordinance, it indicates the information that the court would expect with regard to an application. That's in section application process for intermediate and large scale SES. And it has the nine factors that the court had indicated. Also, uh, stated a certain amount of copies. I think, now, to Scout's uh, uh, indication to me uh, through counsel or through maybe through, through, through Jason, I think. Their thought was is we're sending the MOU, which would include kind of what we've done on those maps mm -hmm. as possibly being the application. Now, certainly they are the first ones to have to to deal with our language and what we expect. But uh, I think they thought that the MOU was, in a sense, considered what would be the application in the variance that he indicated. And as and as far as this. All this is is a broken down version of the big map they were showing. Yeah. That, that's just a, so, you know, nothing, it's just nothing has changed from your map from our last meeting. No, sir. So, we, so the, when we said we wanted to meet in the middle, y'all have changed nothing from y'all's original map to meet our. We met with the variance and then y'all changed nothing to meet our ordinance. At all. Well, I, I can leave it up to the attorneys because there's been a lot of discussion on individual provisions here 
and the MOU and working through some clarifications of what is currently in the ordinance. So there's been a lot of give and take amongst the attorneys to try and reach a form of agreement that hopefully is sufficient to y'all, the county, and to us uh, can ultimately protect our landowners, protect these folks that have signed voluntary agreements that want to see this project get built. In, in, in regard to the negotiation, I mean, one of the things that I, that I did stress is this court was was concerned with not being able to have not been presented where they could see individual distances like they have been seen today. You know, the map that we saw originally uh, was a great overview map that we got a general idea. Uh, this provides uh, that was seven days. That was more. This provides more specifics. So. This was helpful. So as far as the negotiation, the MOU is on the presumption that you have seen and are okay with the setbacks. And that's what they are presenting to you today, uh, asking you to consider. But it is based on the presumption that you would be okay with those amendments. Yeah, and to your point, I'll, I'll just say that the map and the language sort of go hand in hand, right? I mean, the map hasn't necessarily... Um, I wasn't here from the last one, but from what it sounds like, you're telling me that the map hasn't changed. But there have been a lot of gifts in terms of the language, in terms of what the, the company is willing to do um, to address concerns that I understand were brought up by the fiscal court. Um, and some of these things you, you wouldn't be able to get otherwise without a vehicle I, like this. Farmland, eminent domain, stuff like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they have, we have, I have indicated some of the important parts. The only thing, and they have uh, been uh, agreeable to a number of things that, that I heard from the magistrates that you wanted. Just the only issue that we weren't able to really see in detail was, was really the setback and possibly some screenings. But everything else, uh, we have, uh, uh, they've negotiated in good faith and come to me on, on some things that they were willing to change based on what you wanted. And to me, this map just, the other map, we knew it was going to be a minimum of 200 or 100. But when you come to this blown up map and see it, you know, majority are 370 or 440. Uh, so I think this just kind of puts it in, in real world terms. And it, it's, with, them, with one exception, it's much farther than I thought it would be. You know, the only, the 170 is the closest one. Um, you know, and, and, and it realistically, you know, could have been a hundred, so it's almost double um, of what what the setback was. And with respect to the setbacks, I just want to say the thing that's unique about this plant is it's not loud. You don't have noise. It's not throwing off exhaust fumes. It's not throwing off dust. You don't have those nuisances like you could have <coughs> other plants and it's better than other be businesses. Really and that's where I understand the view shed, I completely respect it. That's where the vegetative screening, we're, we're trying to protect those landowners, but it's just unique because you don't have the noise, you don't have the dust, you don't have the exhaust, you don't have a lot of those challenges that, that come with other plants. I mean, this is going to be, you know, about a $300 million project and over $60 million in new tax revenue, and you don't have to worry about, you know, how new kids are, uh, you know, going to be taught in school or how roads are going to need to be improved and how you need all this new infrastructure. Um, it, it's a unique project in that way. Yeah. But I, if I, might, I think I remember this right, but you, you said well, if you looked at this ordinance and saw 2,500 feet, that you would say that, well, they don't want to do business. Correct. And then, so I thought we were coming to some sort of a compromise, and then you bring back the exact same uh, setbacks that originally talked about. So I would almost, you know, return those words back to you to this point. But we have to protect our landowners. So, I mean, we've landowners that have signed voluntary agreements. We have landowners that want to participate in this project. And, you know, we took setbacks that when you look at your kind of, if you will, standard setbacks that have gotten steel out of the ground here in Kentucky, We've applied those to this project. So we try and strike the balance because for our participating landowners, you don't want to hand the keys to their farm over to the neighbor with a setback that's so great they can't use their property for what they
they've entrusted us to do with it, which is to build this project. So uh, 100 or 200 feet, that's that's the only way you can make the project work, is what you're saying. In, in this ground, you got a lot of topography. I mean, you got some wet areas. We're trying to limit. I mean, y'all are really focused on prime farmland, farmland is statewide importance. We're trying to not have to knock down a bunch of trees either. So we're, we're, we're trying to strike that middle ground here. And, you know, when we look at 100 to 200 feet, I mean, that those, those are setbacks that we believe protects the county, protects our landowners, protects the natural environment, protects those other folks that are living out there by also, you know, doing stuff like adding vegetative screen. And these setbacks are very common for projects that are being developed in this part of the state. I mean, the siting board has pretty regular requirements, even if there aren't local requirements. And it's not at all uncommon for there to be 100, 200 foot setbacks from either roads or the closest residential home. As Marcus pointed out, that's not the standard setback, right? I mean, that is the most conservative point in the entire project is 170 feet. And I, I agree with you probably that. But my thing is, would you want them right next to your house if you had a big, a nice house? If you look at it, there are a lot of projects that have actually increased the value of the homes around them because you essentially have an agreement for 40 years. They're not going to put a road back there. They're not going to put a shopping mall back there. They're not going to put a factory back there. So there are various projects around the country where the, the property values have actually increased. And there, I don't have the studies on me, but we can provide them. Most of the studies that have been done about specific projects around the state of Kentucky show that the property value either stays the same or in some instances they, they expect that it will go up by about 1 to 2%. So it's not a major shift, but it is. It's not a decrease in property value because of that guarantee that you know what's going to be next to your house for the next 40 years. And at the end of the 40 years for that decommissioning law, the plant will get taken out. And you can return that ground back to farm ground, back to conservation, back to hunting. But what I'm saying is, would you want that next to your house, whether it's 100 to 200 foot? I, mean, I personally would be fine with it, right? No. There, my, many of my neighbors have solar panels on their property, but I also understand it's not. Not the worst to have, but I, 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 it's not going to break by your house if I live there. But I mean, well, and, and we we do a lot of business in Texas, and you look at that setback, 100 foot. Yeah. I mean, it, it's 100 foot, and Texas had the most megawatts of solar installed of any state in the United States last year. And listen, I want to go. I want to go this way because it, it puts us in, in in contention for plants or businesses we, we couldn't have, but we didn't have this. Like I said, my question is, is that one area, is there any way, I know you signed contracts, but like you have these red areas right here, not planned. Why can't you move an area that's highly residential to like, Maybe on the bottom down here, it's not planned. There's, there's no residentials around anywhere. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? We've, we've ground there, and I mean, you might have to knock down a bunch of trees. So I don't want to get too environmental here, but the tricolored bat was recently listed by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. There are a lot of prohibitions now on tree removal because of tricolored bat. So again, we're, we're trying to strike that balance, and where you're concerned, and to what you know. What council brought up was have those folks show up as we start the PDC process and share those concerns. And if it's a common concern, we can make those adjustments then. We but we just, know we're not going to, we probably won't make them. Once we sign this, they're not going to make it. They're probably going to make it. Well, I mean, the, the PDC can always. Yeah, the Public Service Commission isn't going to look at this as like this is the end of the uh, assessment. I mean, the, the Public Service Commission is going to look at this as like this is this is the, the ceiling for what it is, and we may order things that are more restrictive, right? I mean, that's the only way that this operates. Um, so if there is a, a significant contingent of individuals that participate in that, um, that siting board process and they have concerns, the siting board will, will listen to those and potentially require us to do something about that. There's also the site visit. This, the siting board brings their staff and some of the members of the siting board out and we are going to drive down that road and we're going to stand in those people's front yard and look at where the project's going to go. So I mean it's not just that they're going to sit in their offices in Frankfurt, we're all going to be here in Ohio County together looking at this, determining whether or not that's a viable setback for those areas. So one more point. is there a possibility that section might could be moved someday? It might not necessarily be there. If the siting board requires it to be moved, then it'll be moved because it doesn't get built without the siting board approval. And, and if we don't move it, what I would like to see, I see there's areas, but at least that horse, horse mark you got, Dave Jones, you got, you got like, I, 
I would like to see that whole area right there, of course, wrapped with the beds chasing instead of the section yeah. here, here. I would like to see that whole section. I concur with that. I would like to see it go all the way around. I mean, I've made that, I've made that point. Before. Because that, that's the most residential area. How long does the siding board go out of these sections? I have a question. How long does the siding board have to be in here? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm um, but by the time they accept it, then they will have uh, nine months. It. No, excuse me, it's 100, right it's it's 180, 180 days. days. Well, I've got that wrong. It's 180 days. So they have six months from the time that they start to evaluate until they decide it. And it's you're moving at a pretty good pace. So every two weeks, they're giving us information. We're giving them information. We're meeting. We're out here in Ohio County. So it's it's a it's a fairly intensive six months. And I know really from here to there, that's not the trees is not going to cost a whole lot of so. <laughs> so it's Jason, right? Yes. Yeah. So let me just for the whole course of here, let me just throw, throw an idea out here. What if we were agreed to vegetative screening over that around that entire block of panels? Would, would, would that alleviate your concern? It, it would be best, but it would be better than not. You know what I mean? And then, I mean, Michael, what did you hear what he said? Michael. And then again, it, it's great for us. PSC might look at this and say, you need greater setbacks. You need to do more out there. But here's the day that we can decide to like it. We'll, we'll, we'll do that shape screen around that higher one here. So that you can
And they're replaced if they die out, they still know they'll replace them. I mean, there were quite rounds in that area, certainly. But also, because these are not so good. Because you had to make these?
40 years is, is substantial. Just, that, that's great, right. but the main half, thing half I million want, per year. Do I, half a million per year in, in additional tax revenue. Well, over about 533,000. Unless it changes like the barrel tax. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. Just saying. But my, my thing is, and I'm not necessarily, that's great. That, that's a number a lot bigger than 50,000. I wouldn't really about 50. Are we going to be able to draw a plant? That's kind of what I was. Are we going to be able to draw something? That's If I knew that, you know, it's. Yeah, but if every community knew that, then you, know, you wouldn't be sitting here. You'd be have people knocking down your doors, you know, come to us, come to us. I mean, we, we know. Is it an additional tool? Absolutely. Is it, is it something that we need here in the county, additional power? It's our biggest holdback. And you yeah. would think with power it plants surrounding us, uh, it wouldn't be. But yeah, I mean, I've told you all before, bluegrass crossing is the number one issue we have. We don't have enough power. Caterpillar a few years ago, it was a serious wow. option here. It ended up in Alabama. We didn't have the power to even get them. We couldn't even talk to them. And then we also have companies that have that feel-good thing about green energy. And one one more thing. For that. I want to agree. So you're going to contract the big rivers. Does that mean they're going to, are they no. going to go completely? No, 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 no. So our point of interconnection, where we're taking all the power, yeah. is to the existing substation at the DB Wells. Well, so, yeah, I call big rivers the DB Wells. Yeah. yeah, so that's where, where all the power is going to. Yeah. Then the power flows out on the grid. But, you know, to the judge's point, who's buying that power? It's your Facebooks, it's your <coughs> Amazons, it's your Walmarts, it's your Fords. It's all these companies that are shopping green power and they want to be located near where the green power is being produced. And that's what I, I encourage you all to look at. I mean, we're looking at, and you all might think, well, it's just a solar project. You look at all the additional business that could follow from this project and have a really significant impact for the county. Well, so if, if you sell the Big Rivers and D.B. Wilson, it goes in the what grid. about coal? It's not just two DB. Okay, will they still be able to burn coal? Because I mean, we no, are a coal producing yeah. plant. Yeah. It's yeah. Not that's one thing we don't want to hurt our coal industry too, because no, it won't change yeah. DB Wilson's operation okay. at all. Because you know, TVA they they dropped a lot of their coal and went straight to, oh, yes. and we don't want that to happen because we we would like to have a coal mine eventually come back and sell coal to instead of our coal. And that's actually in the works. So you yeah. you mentioned something about concrete, and I might this this is just. I've gone off memory, but I thought we weren't going to have concrete in in the construction of the panels. Is that was I incorrect on that? So what they do is you have you drive your piles and then you pour slurry. So what you have is you have a little slurry that's that's uh, poured in the panels. Let me uh, pull you up a picture here. Well, just like once you get back to that, are you going to be able to get back to the original? State and conquer as it states here with the slurry mix being in there. Yep. So I'll, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So this is this is at our Texas project. That's your concrete, mm -hmm. right? It's just like you're putting a T post in the ground and you're setting it with quick, quick rate, right? Yeah. So that is the only concrete they have in the ground. So when the plant gets decommissioned, what you do is you take your panels off. You ultimately have your tracker system. This pile, you just pull right out of the ground like with a T post, that concrete. And then you just fill in that hole, and you return that ground to as it was before. So that, I mean, that that's all the concrete that goes in there. That's the story. So that's how you ultimately set your the piles about three, four feet deep. Yes, sir. Yeah, they're three, four feet. So you set your piles not concrete. And then when the plants decommission, <coughs> take your panels off, take your tractors off, pull your piles, pull, pull your concrete comes with it, fill in your holes, and that ground's returned just the same as it always was before. on these old wind projects is we have a great site for a power plant. That power plant might reach the end of its life. It's usually repowered, right? So you're putting in new panels that can be more efficient. 
albeit we'd have to go back to landowners and renegotiate the deal because their leases are only for <clears throat> 30 years and say we're running up the end of the term. We'd have to go and negotiate a new agreement with the, with the landowners, but with that interconnection that we would have out there, D.B. Wilson, if we know it's a great spot for a power plant, Bob's are 30 years from now, it's going to be a great spot. We'll have to get everything renegotiated to keep it going, but um, we, we've not decommissioned a plant yet. You ever had to sue any of the counties you're working with? Fortunately, no, sir. So we, we, we try to have conversations like this, right? I mean, even if you look at Ohio County, different areas of the county are different from others. We're trying to do what works right here for our landowners, for you all, the county, you know, from the neighbors. So we, we, we try to work with you all to get this right, get it designed right, get it built right, get it operated right, so, so we, we don't get in a fight, we don't get in a lawsuit. Mentioned lawsuit. What about litigation in general? Any litigation yet so far? Not with any counties. Our what about homeowners? Homeowners, we, we haven't, so. Uh, yes? I think we've got, got your information. Justin, what do you, what do you, what do you think of it? Well, I think, uh, you know, we uh, they've been amenable to some of the terms that we want to stress, which is eminent domain, farmland, some of those things that we, you know, just conservation, all of that. So they have been amenable. I think the court would have probably preferred a quicker uh, or, or more, excuse me, more time to review uh, some of the exhibits that were given to you today, it sounds like. Uh, unfortunately, for all the parties involved, it's, um, they have certain obligations with regard to payments as of October 4th. Two days. Yeah, two days from now to uh, a substantial payment. Uh, whether that substantial payment would be made, probably it's what they've told me, depends upon uh, the actions of the court. I think it just become, comes down to whether you need to see any additional information uh, I will. I will tell you that they have. Uh, uh, to be fair, they have uh, been agreeable to some of the modifications that you requested um, uh, outside of the setback. I, I feel like the setback was the primary. That's that's, that's the only problem I had with the setbacks. And can I say, how much is enough? I still like to run the residential area. I agree, but, but how much? I mean, that's the thing. Well, I mean, how that, much is enough? But, but when you're sitting down in the valley, it's like, man, you see it all over the place. I'm just saying, uh, that's that one area is all I really have a problem with. And they've agreed to do this. They agreed to put all the vegetation all the way around it. You know, so they don't work hard. That's the place you have Because I, I understand, I know they talk to them, but I think there's people that are not real happy down in that area. So. I agree. Uh, but I mean, I just don't know where you draw the line. I mean, it's, it's the whole chicken house thing again. I mean, you know, 600 feet was good enough for, it still is good enough for chicken houses. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, I'd rather have one more 10 of these than one but chicken house. He said something about sheep being in there. I mean, sheep carry more disease and stink just as bad as a chicken does. Well, not as a... 16,000 chickens, yeah. and, they, and they don't run long, all the time. Yeah. They come in and out when they use for vegetation management. They move them in and out. Uh, so I just don't know where you draw the line. And instead of losing this completely, I would rather see it proceed tonight, and then the concerns be brought up to the state. Yeah, the state will advertise and have public hearings. If, if requested, I believe is what you said it right. That's right. That's a small that's a small community down there. We we as a court in Ohio County hear their concerns. Uh, if you know hundred people don't show up to the state board, then they're not gonna they're not gonna yeah, but, they're not gonna look at that. But if every member of, of Forest Martin Luke send somebody or, or has somebody there, then they're going to address Forrest Martin Luther. The concern. 
you know, so I think that. So if we had everybody more smart, would come. You know, I what would they do? They're going to address that concern, like you said. They can make them add vegetation, move farther from the road, or don't put them there. I do want the vegetation wrap around it. Yes. I believe they do agree to it. And we could add that in a, a, a line to that effect. And let me say again, I, I wish this, I wish it all had longer. I don't blame them and I don't blame y'all. It was just the way it happened. They had filed all their paperwork, they were proceeding, and then the ordinance got thrown in. So that is what's thrown the, the cog in the wheel and really made things happen quicker because they do have that payment to stay in the queue, uh, which will allow them to do this project. So I don't think it's their fault, and I don't think it's the court's fault. I think it's just the way it happened. We've got to live with how it is now. Uh, there's still a, re a substantial review process after this. So I don't know what the holdup is at this level. I think, you know, if there's a huge issue going forward, let's address it. Maybe the court addresses Horace Martin Luke at that time. The state may say, well, why didn't you do it then? You say, listen, we were we were counting on it going through. We, we were rushed. This is what we had. This is what we voted on. Is there a way we can vote on this with the contingency that we're going to still look at Horace Martin Luke? No. Not in the, well, no, nothing's going to stop you from going to the state. This is just what you're agreeing with them for their application. And I believe you said he would add that uh, uh, vegetation. vegetation. Yeah, but I mean, I, I still, I'm protecting. Because I... I to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to confront. I'm, it's better than chicken barbs. It's better than a lot of things, but it—it's not what you want to say. I'm not, and I just look out for those people. And, I, and, and I ultimately, agree. I've got to look out for the best of Ohio County. But those four or five presidents, they do matter. Mm -hmm. And maybe the vegetation it will be enough. You know, I mean, the, the closest one is like around forty foot on that loop. Have you been to Logan County, Harrison? Sorry? Have you been to Logan County and see that project and see what the vegetation boundary is going to look like? I have not, no. no. So then how do we know? Well, I mean, the pictures and, and take them at their words, all you can do at this point, go by what's required. And it's black and white and what we're green to. Yeah, and it, and it does show where it's going to be. Uh, and and the, the guidelines in here, I mean, we'll have some teeth. We'll be able to hold them to it. I'd like to say something. Yeah, please, please, okay. please don't break that in mind. All right. Uh, my biggest concern when I walked in this room eight days ago was, was that the setbacks just looked to me on the map. I mean, I, I could look at it to scale. and I, could, I realized the, the 85, I, I brought that strip there up. I just showed him again on the map. Uh, you know, not that... I'm trying to plan what they're going to do to, uh, with their land 30 years from now, but I can see that maybe being owned by someone else and they may want to put three dwellings there. I know they can plant, you can, they can come to you and ask you to plant trees then, but for protection of the of the highway and not anything being on that, uh, I guess it would be west, 85. west of 85 there. Um, I'm just thinking that, that that strip should have the vegetation from like a tree line from one end to the other where the fence is parallel to the road. And I understand when, when the fence cuts back and then there's setbacks for the panels, and I understand that. Um, just for the, the even for the, the people that are driving the highway, even for, for those people. Um, though that was one concern. That loop, which we knew they were addressing it. I was a little concerned about that. I want the project. I want the project to happen. I think that the landowners that have agreed to this should be able to do what they want with their land. Although we also passed this ordinance, not with the with the no knowledge, no acknowledgement of your intentions of being involved in a project of this magnitude. Uh, I, I'm speaking only for myself. I had no knowledge that you you guys were in town. You've been here two and a half, three years. I didn't know you were here. To that, I'm going to say, I wish that we had been able to sit down before the ordinance even, because I feel like that, yes, some of our setbacks were not 
inviting green energy. I understand that. But as to look at this project individually as we have it now, I feel like that there are some not as much setback issues for you guys, but just more um, some more screening to protect those people that are not participating, not participating as well as even the ones that today are not opposed, to maybe to new landowners in that area because those those properties in 30 years could change hands. Yeah. So, Michael, I mean, again, we, we want to work with the county, so it's the last page on the map here is what I'm looking at. That's really the main so, thing, other than the loop, yes. So, so, so let's say, again, we, we, we want to reach the middle ground here to do us right. If we were to extend that bed shade of screening on this last page of the map, all the way to the east, it looks like there's a, a, that furthest east transmission pole that you can see. Right where you hit that tree on the east side of the map, if we extend that vegetative screen all the way east, there's that tree. And then if we're to take it all the way west, you can see that tree, you know, right there. We got that north-south road coming into uh, coming into the highway. If we're to agree to do all that vegetative screen there, with, with that, is that okay for you? That that was my biggest concern that the other night as well as the today, and as far as the screen goes. The loop area that Jason's talking about is a different, a different deal. That's that's also was a concern of mine. But as far as the project and wanting to move forward, I think we all are. But as council said, I mean the state's got 180 days to review this. We've had eight. I'm, I'm, and, and that wasn't really anybody in particular's fault. But we had no knowledge of you guys being in town until I got that call. To, to be at that meeting last week. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, so the two things, I mean, I absolutely hear your concerns. We want to work with you. We, we want to get this resolved. And on the east side, we're, we're willing to do vegetative screening. To impose some sort of big setback out on the east side, that's Travis Wilson. Who, which, who's going to call Travis and say, I'm sorry, you, you can't use your property? I've spoke to Travis three times since we were here the other day, but, that, but that's not here or there. I mean, he's... Yeah, I understand. I mean, we're not trying to dictate how someone uses their property. Yeah, we're we're trying to protect other people's the, properties. The, the other people's properties from screening. So I mean, it's not it's not about trying to make you all set back further. We've kind of come to a consensus on that. It's the vegetation. I think right now for for me. Now I know that the amount of setback in the loop and that's concerning to me. But I I'm not here to argue a, a distance either. Yeah. And, and I haven't that, spoke to those people. And that's where I, I want to be in the middle here. And on that east side... But well, don't think I wouldn't go down and talk to all of them, because I would, even though it's not my district, because these are well, these are people that are... I mean, they're friends and family of everyone that, you know, that live in the community. So. And Travis is my district, but I have to tell him that I would. <laughs> you know, he's in my district. Uh, Travis owns property in my district. Yeah. So, so, so there, we're, we're trying to be in the middle. So on the east side, we're willing to do vegetative screening. Here, on this... You know, last page of the deal. We'll do the vegetative screening from the east side. They see there to the west side. So, what if we did this? What if the county appointed a couple people from that area? Maybe a maybe Bo and one other, and you, you or whoever, actually go to these sites and work to an agreed upon length of vegetation on the concerned sites. Could could that be worked out later? To where you say, you know, I mean, looking at this map, it's great, but you know, on the on the west side, it may need to extend another hundred foot, or it may not need to go that far. But if you had a couple people here and a couple people with y'all after the fact, before the state meets, to go out and look. Yeah, I, 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 Jason, I think that's a great idea, and we we be absolutely willing to do it so. because it's a you, you have, have to have, have a, you have, to have enough to consider whether to make the payment Friday. Is what you're saying. Well, I, we need action from the court on this. On the MOU. Yes. Yeah, we need action from the court. Oh, I'm going here with that. And the other thing to remember too is if you if they agree to the extending the screening out x so far tonight, that doesn't mean that that's the end of the discussion, right? That's just that's where the baseline is moving forward, right? right. right. If there's additional screening that needs to be included later, and there's discussions. <laughs> Community, discussion with the team or discussions with the signing board, there may be additional screening made later. What we're talking about tonight is just the floor from where we're going to go forward, right? right. I mean, this is the baseline. 
Yeah. What what I what I'd recommend is the judge or y'all make an appointment of a couple people to meet with them on site and go over these problems of concern with screening, only screening. We're going to talk about screening and work to adjust it as needed. Because like that last page may need may need an extra 200 foot or it may not need to go as far west, you know, because there's absolutely no houses down through there. So the group with the county can go out along with the group with Scout and say, you know, we want to address this spot. You know, a horse, Martin, we may need two rows of trees in this 100 foot. Like I said, this is just the floor. This is just the baseline. And uh, on this one, to go look at it, did you suggest to Jason? Well, you suggest, well, you, are you, which Jason suggested that? This one? Okay. Uh, what if we pass this memorandum of understanding? Mike. So they can meet their timeline. If we pass so that's worse one. this with a, with a little amendment that Justin will write in my hand here that says that this, uh, you guys, if you choose to, and their guys will go look at it. And some of them might already nationally have some. There's still so much discussion. So like right here, I'm not for sure. Some of the decisions come up in this way. So when they come out, they're not going to see it, even though that's and a horse mark and, and just bring right there because there's a residence here. I, just, I was Three concerned about the 85 strip because this is a state, this is a state highway. <coughs> this is right after you've come into Ohio County. From I see this area. Here. Here. And, 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 I just I mean, I just thought that push that push back off that because there's a highway, highway street. Street. We should do it as a Do that for all, all reasons, not just someone's line of sight from their front door and their porch drinks coffee. That's the way you said, Jason. You're right. You're not going to stop the houses, but I mean, I can see six houses or four or five houses being built here. And, and we plant the trees now, and it invites someone to possibly build a house. There. There's already natural there. So, and I'll say, I think so where's the happen on this? It's going to be somebody's going to build. They're not going to want something. You so when we drive out, they're not going to want to be a bad neighbor. Supposedly, why not? I don't good. think it's going to be pulling teeth to get them to come back for the brand new house. Keep that in mind. I don't know the trees. There's a bunch there's of natural trees. Like there's a bunch of natural trees. I don't know if I got the details. Do you feel like that that might need to be addressed? That's what I'm saying. Now I agree. I'm going to get the information. That's probably the tree. Because they don't want to heal on the tree. They do that one. That one might just move that one there.
bench is actually out. Yeah. So this yeah. scale in exactly right. right. Because if that's too or if there's no way, you know, that would be more. Just so we'll make sure it gets right. right. Exactly. So yeah, just leave it with that yeah. little yeah. The panels yeah. have to be too. Yeah, you're right, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the scaling on the mic. The panels have to be too much. All right, so fence is gone. Yeah, but that's just the scaling. So with these, what we're talking about here, we can work on this, what you just saw. We're okay with that yes. problem. Yep. And then the viewing amendment, where we can, we'll go and, and, and view. And that will be any match that it wants to go. Yeah. Whatever. Just, just something so you can work it out on a case by case. And I could have, I, I know I got called yesterday from one of you, I'm not sure, but I, I if I stand it up over my chair, I might have side of the problem. So I've been. Uh, Jason, are you ready to go to accept it with the addition of the viewing committee to look at the other day? So they go on the uh, application. Okay, I'm not real happy with the timeline, but I will go ahead and make the motion to. I have the motion. That's, that seems to be insane. Yeah. Yeah. For us to vote on the on this when there's we there there was chatter going out through the entire room and we're gonna vote this there. Well do you wanna there's a motion. And a second if you're gonna say for a second. Die for like a second. No, I die a second. But the screenings, we've That's agreed on screenings. Right. Yes sir. So I mean if y'all approve it it'll be Subject to the revised screening that they propose. Brian, Mike, we got anything else to add? I don't know. Uh, I don't like timeline at all. Uh, and, and maybe that's my fault to nobody. I feel like there's going to need to be some discretion going forward because of future evidence development. Uh, you know, I feel like we're the we're probably more critical than the state would be. And if we pass this, then it's just going to go right on through. I mean, that maybe application only gets accepted the first time, but then the second or third time it does, and we're the ones holding back essentially if the state just lets it go right on through. I don't feel comfortable with that. Yeah. Well, I'd like to make this a public announcement, I guess. We don't have countywide planning zone. So when people buy property, and they intend to do whatever they want with it, they buy property in an area where there's not planning and zoning, they expect to be able to do what they want with it. I don't begrudge that. But I want to see that we can try to protect those people that are not participating as far as with the line of sight or the view. That's exactly right. That is concern of mine. The setback numbers, I know that in the beginning, when we passed this ordinance originally, maybe we weren't being very inviting to green energy. I see that now. Although we all did something that we had never done before when we made that decision. You all brought some things to light, and I want to thank you for that. But on the flip side of that, these few people, these constituents, we are their voice, and when we make this vote, this is, this is for those people. That's why we were elected. And I, I think that the, the time period's been a crunch. Whoever, no one will take the blame for that. But we, we're, we're here now, so I, I assume we've got a, a motion in a second, so we're going to need to vote. And Justin, do you think legalities of this MOU, MO, where we put the changes in it, it protects us from? So the, the agreement is such that, that they are binding both the court so that they have some certainty, and us um, 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 having our, in a sense, really as far as the agreement goes, we're allowing certain variances, which would include setback and some of those. They have included certain things in there that offer us some protection. But again, there is a lot of variance from the original ordinance. But um, the covenant not to do any eminent domain, uh, farmland to be considered any amendment application. We wanted to make sure those concerns that you that they could just take land in or they couldn't just start another part of the project without coming to us. That's the concerns that the court indicated to me was was stuff that was important to them to put in this. Well, and I hate it too, but like I said, we don't have land in zone. I I'll say something as well, Judge. Uh, but with with this, 
whether it's a good project or not, Ohio County just hoisted another national company on the backs of our citizens. So, there you go. I think we're just going to have to go on it. And, uh, I don't uh, understand where, where we are. And, uh, uh, well, it's all new to us, you know what I mean? But I mean, the, everybody's doing it, and do, do we knock ourselves out? That's what I, I'm a, I, I'm not real, real sure, but like I said, we have to go play in zoning. I don't like the timeline, and... More than all of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got several concessions. Justin been working on it for a couple of days or, or longer. We've got several little concessions. But the well, area that it's in... The final, the final stuff showed up after the, the, the exhibit, which was important to the court, showed up after the meeting started, which, which, which is, a, is a variance of itself of the ordinance because it, it says that you should have some time to consider it. Uh, the only other thing that could happen is, is uh, to, to have a, another special call, but it would have to be on October 4th. I don't even know if that would be. That's the that's tomorrow. Or no, the Friday. Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't see yeah, that that's possible. I don't know if it would change anything. I don't see that's possible. Well, like I said, I, you're in an area where it's all reclaimed land anyway. It's not much except for those one little spots. You are going to put vegetation around. Still not real happy with the horse market. I wish you could spoon completely somewhere else. But. And I understand we're both coming in. This is this is his people right there. I mean, I'm going to make some people mad. This one. The reason I was passionate about it is the uh, economic benefit of each of the county and the fact that we would be on the leading edge of something instead of waiting until the, the, near the caboose of the train to get on board. Uh, I would. Uh, I don't like to be last on everything. And, uh, and like I said, I, I see a lot of economic growth coming from this if we were able to do it. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not know the consensus, but we're going to have to vote on it because we have motions. So well, I do feel like in the future we might need to think about some planning and zoning areas. I know every time I bring something like that up, people get all. Yeah. But that's what it, that's what planning and zoning protects people from. Yeah. If it had been planning and zoning, that would be their board, not us, talking about this. Uh, but I guess we're going to win by the grand. Johnson? Yes. Daniel? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? No. You guys, you better do us right. We've got our, we, we put our neck into this. So, <coughs> so the Take care of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take yes, it, sir. And that's the only thing we can discuss, so the meeting's adjourned.